I changed my uh, title actually. I'm going to talk about reflecting the border crossing experiences of Korean women intellectuals in Korean colonial modern history, focusing on three women intellectuals of uh, Nahe Seok. Yesterday, actually, the Professor Kim So Young actually screened the film about her, and Kim Ha Lan, and then Mo Yun Soo. Uh, actually, what I'm going to do today is kind of I'm not. It's, this is a really very draft draft paper. And I'm going to talk about the predicament of uh, women intellectuals. Um, and then uh, maybe yesterday, uh, and then also the Professor Lashida uh, talked about the uh, intellectuals issues a lot. But uh, I wanted to begin to talk about the Asian, you know, the, today's theme the Asian women intellectuals. The today's conference theme and the emergence and heritage of Asian women intellectuals is highly significant in that it opens up discussion of the meaning of women intellectuals in Asia, connotating the non-West. Beyond addressing what knowledge and education mean to women, I believe this theme questions uh, so many issues relating to women, uh, such as um, relationship between private and public for women, relationship between tradition and modernity, between femininity and masculinity, between equality and differences. So actually, um, you know, and male and female powers in transforming uh, the world. So I wish to use the term Asian women intellectuals, which is part of this title, as a new historical concept with uh, diverse meanings and implications. So uh, there are largely two ways of understanding, I think, the word Asian in the title of Asian women intellectuals. One is that these are women intellectuals from Asian regions. The other one is that these women, these are women intellectuals um, who took the different interests in and challenged the issues concerning Asia as a non-Western region or the concept of Asian modern as opposed to Western modern. Seen in this light, the term the Asian, Asian women intellectuals brings interesting intellectual challenges and provide a basis for imagining the thought and conflicts of women intellectuals in Asian region in terms of the relationship between locality and modernity. I do not discuss this issue further, but I think this is a very uh, important issue that we have to think about. Through my uh, presentation today, I will talk about three specific uh, cases of uh, Korean women intellectuals and argue that in order to historicize women intellectuals, the framework of questioning that Rashida actually talked uh, you know, uh, much, and then epistemology surrounding historical writing must be challenged and changed. Uh, I wanted to begin uh, my talk about the Western centeredness of knowledge and intellectuals. So, absence of Korean women intellectuals in institutional, uh, institutional education in Korea. Growing up, I was uh, schooled. Uh, maybe this kind of experience is very similar to many uh, intellectuals in Asian countries. Growing up, I was schooled within the modern educational system and learned about the intellectuals who had affected people's mind, the great men of history. I remember reading many biographies, trying to find a great person that I could emulate in my life. I must have been going through a process of finding a so-called role model. Most of the biographies out there were of men. I still remember that I was very excited about their heroic acts and that I wanted to achieve a great dream like them. But I also remember being aware that I did not have the same gender as them and feeling troubled. I thus realized relatively early that it is important for girls to have a female 
role model. The first great woman I discovered for my role model was Madame Curie. All through middle school, actually, you know, as many uh, girls, yeah. I was determined to become a physicist like her and told people that I wanted to become a, like a Madame Curie. I read uh, so many novels during middle and high schools. And in my late teens, as uh, many uh, intellectuals in uh, Asia, I read Sartre, Kafka, Hermann Hess, Roman Lolland, and uh, Gamu, and all those people. I also came across women writers, including Korean uh, John Herin, who had studied in Germany, and uh, Simone de Bobar, and uh, Louise Linger in my high school. But when a young woman takes a woman intellectual as her role model, it always seems that the first thing on her mind is who was partner of this intellectual in private life. I think young women knew, knew well that it is not just what made a woman great that's important, but also who made her great, or rather, who made her miserable. Just as most high school girls at the time took heterosexual relationship in life for granted, young women supposed that a male lover played a formidable role in a woman intellectual's growth into a great mind. It was hardly possible for them to envision a woman becoming a great on her own without a man's influence. At the same time, it was also difficult to think about Korean intellectuals without or thinking about the West. Intellectuals were people who were Westerners or had experienced the West and were deeply involved in thoughts about the Western and the modern for my generation. When I became a university professor in the mid-90s and I began to teach women's studies, uh, women's studies, I referred to Western feminists as a women intellectuals who had raised issues that women were absent from defining women's lives and the world. I would talk about Wollstonecraft, Virginia Woolf, Simone de Bobar, Kate Millett, and so many other Western women intellectuals. Later, the range of women intellectuals and their texts were widened to include Spivak's writing on post-colonialism and, uh, you know, the wider uh, Sargasso Sea as a post-colonial text version of Jane Eyre. But even post-colonial discourse were belonging to the package of Western theories, which we are so heavily reliant upon. I had I have also tried to teach the students about the women's movement in Korea, but the way in which framing the women's movement in Korea was dependent upon the Western feminist theories. Here, the Korea was regarded as a specific scene where upon, where upon the general feminist vision would be put into practice. Similarly to most Asian male intellectuals who had received modern education, Asian women intellectuals were also faced with the problem of a coloniality of their knowledge. By the mid-90s, consciousness on this matter was shaped by feminists in Korea and many other countries, which led to the formation of network of feminist scholars of eight Asian countries beginning in 1998. In that uh, process, actually, Suana and Noi, you know, the Thai professors also involved. I believe a discussion on Asian women intellectuals must start from an awareness and a problematization of the framework of Western slash modern as a referential basis for knowledge and intellectuals in Asia. Without problematizing the Western centeredness of knowledge and the Western model of thought shared by modern intellectuals in Asia. A meaningful discussion of knowledge production and intellectuals in Asia is difficult to achieve. A very nationalistic approach is also related to this idea of the West modern epistemology, I think. Uh, I want to talk about 
these uh, three, uh, the Korean women intellectuals. Um, women intellectuals in the colonial era. Uh, yeah. Women intellectuals in the colonial era. It seems that no specific definition or expected role exists for Korean intellectuals in Korea, women intellectuals in Korea. The oldest and the most widely shared perception of intellectuals in Korea is that they are people who have received a lot of learning, so learned women. Having received a lot of learning, intellectuals have been considered to have a responsibility and duty to return some of their knowledge back to society, which is why they have been met with a particular harsh criticism for causing harm to others or conducting themselves in a selfish manner. Granted, in today's Korean society, where there are so many learned people that there are countless PhD graduates unable to find a job. People with high education have begun to identify themselves as professional, specialists, or researchers rather than intellectuals. Nevertheless, back in the days when there are very few learned people, education was itself a valuable social resource and credential. In Korea, learning and education first became accessible to everyone with the introduction of the modern educational system in the colonial period. It was then that women began to be educated alongside men, and soon some women were receiving high education too. And many, the first women appeared. The first woman Western painter, the first woman PhD, the first woman doctor, the first woman musician made their appearance in the early 20th century. These women were referred, as, uh, referred to as learned women, new women or pioneer, or sometimes dangerous. And examples of women pioneers appeared in school textbook after independence from Japan. But it is widely held that all pioneers are too much ahead of their time and are destined to be victimized by old tradition, old traditional social prejudice. The most well-known woman pioneer from that period is Naheso. I think some of you, uh, you know, the watch the film about her. But not all learned women were pioneers. Pioneers are people who make their appearance before others and visualize and materialize something that has not existed before. They challenge the status quo, they create a new thing, and are often deemed dangerous because they undermine all the social order and stability. When the pioneers are women, especially without male sponsors to protect them, their challenges are bound to be met with a strong opposition. Here, I will talk about the trials and tribulations of Nahesok, the most famous new woman, Kim Hwalan, the, most, the first Korean woman to obtain a PhD degree, and the first Korean to become the president of university, and Mo Yun Suk, a woman poet who was recognized by the most outstanding Korean male writer of the colonial era, Lee Gwang Su, and who played a decisive role in getting the UN to approve the South Korean Constitutional Assembly election in 1948, leading to the birth of the South Korean government. So let me give a brief introduction, each of um, three women concerning on their troubles in 